From the morning reading, the S&P 500 slips below the 50-day line. Late last week, the S&P was testing the upper line in a triangle formation. Friday's 1.1% loss, however, pushed the SPX back below the 50-day average and back to the middle of the price pattern. Trading volume also picked up, although that was largely due to options expiration. Small caps took an even bigger hit. Friday's chart shows the Russell 2000 dropping 1.6% on Friday. The rut, however, remains above its 50-day line. A bigger disappointment occurred in the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. That index hit a record high on Wednesday. Friday's close back below its February peak called into question the upside breakout. At major upside breakouts, it's important that the breakout hold through a Friday close. You also have the SPX closing at a five-day low for the first time in over two weeks. That suggests a short-term upside edge. 1% plus drops on strong negative breath are often followed by a bounce. The continued trading range and moderate Fed stimulus has done little to change the intermediate-term outlook. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.55 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for Market Day, April the 20th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So, we did have <coughs> some significant activity in the overnight. Let's take a look at just what that meant. Indeed, we have had something of a bounce, at least into the overnight. We'll see if the cash market, when all market participants come back together, if this continues and holds or if this is just uh, low volume buying just to reposition to go back down. All four broad market indices were up healthy. Uh, in general, at least half a percent, if not even more. The Russell continues to be the most bullish at up 0.62 percent. Crude oil down about 0.42 percent. The euro down about half a percent. Bonds down about a third of a percent. And gold down 0.4 percent. And overseas action, China down 1.6 percent. Hong Kong down about 2 percent. Japan scratch. Germany up healthy up 1.65 percent. And the FTSE up about two thirds of a percent. Not an awful lot on the macroeconomic report for the start of the week in the U.S. There is nothing really of significance on slate. Looking forward, we'll look at Tuesday. Again, nothing for the U.S. macroeconomic reports. Wednesday, we start to see more come into play. We have existing home sales and, of course, the usual crude oil inventories coming in. So really very little Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on the macroeconomic report uh, front for the United States. So nothing really to kind of move things in any kind of big way. In terms of volatility, obviously Friday brought in some volatility. And uh, you have, if we take a look at all four broad market indices, you know, two plus standard deviation moves on three of the four indices. And even the S&P, this is a one plus, didn't quite get to two. Um, that um, it's significant that the S&P held up as well as it did, given the big weakness of the day. Uh, and yet at the same time, um, this increase in volatility was probably way overdue. We normally see um, two standard deviation, two single standard deviation moves per week on average. We've gone a two week period with no standard deviation moves and then finally had something of a pullback. But on that front, also recognize that indeed when you have weakness it often wipes out many days of crawling up and depending on which index you're looking at you know it, that day wiped out you know maybe one even two weeks worth of up moves all in one day 
Uh, Short-term volatility did climb almost to a 13 on the VXST, 12.91. And you see, um, well, let's see if there's anything else to make of any significant point here. I think that's probably good enough. And let's take a look at our regular daily report. I had a number of changes come into play over the weekend on this. Um, futures traders keep an eye on gold futures. They will probably be rolling towards the end of the week. Keep an eye on that front volume versus the rear volume. Market trend intermediate term phase opinion. This stays at a phase three even with Friday weakness. We, we basically just went right back into the trading range and um, you know continue the compression now where we go today will certainly be important especially early part of this week uh, we'll find out you know if that is going to be something that kickstarts a leg down and especially does it just take us down to the bottom of the range and uh, perhaps a little head fake and then back up or is this something that will follow through and um, you know so you know, when you roll it all up, though, we're just right back in the middle of the range. We're still in a compression phase. The expectation is that you will come out of this compression phase into another leg up to um, take on new highs until that premise is violated. So higher highs, higher lows is still the expectation. But there are significant warnings to that posture. Portfolio investor posture remains uptrend under pressure. GMI index dropped a couple notches to a four out of six. Active trader market posture flipped over to bearish. Um, if this um, Sunday night um, bullish action does continue during the day, this could flip back to bullish. But right now, the active trader market posture has flipped bearish. Uh, position sizing opinions and frankly I probably would go with this first one with a long side portfolio exposure of up to 50 percent you should be um, the suggestion is reducing your exposure where able and certainly taking risk off the table taking profits off the table when possible keep those targets small and when you're in a compression phase often very difficult to get through any kind of follow through targets and uh, you probably it's best said to keep your powder dry until better market conditions uh, expose themselves uh, market timing opinion after this um, uh, action from friday we do expect something of a bullish bounce so the one day and three day outlook is bullish and it would really be quite poor if we were to see um, a significant continuation of bearishness now if we were to have bearishness today, it would frankly just make the one and three day outlook even more bullish with an expectation of a bounce. Two week outlook is slightly bearish. We mentioned about the market posture going bearish and indeed look at this 74 and bearish on the S&P, 64 and bearish on the Dow, 72.8 and bearish on the NASDAQ. Now these are all above 50 and certainly if we um, were to turn back up for a couple days we could see this flip-flop back up to the positive side once again uh, do also note that the Russell is still very bullish it's actually held up and is still up over an 80 so that that index is probably the strongest right now hedge warning status um, I, I had some considerable thought about this whether I should change this after Friday I thought about the potential of raising this to a one plus and kind of um, an incremental step um, don't qu quite have the justification to go to a two uh, a number of important metrics that I look at when it was all said and done I did take a look at the Sunday night action into this morning and um, decided to leave it at a level one which is um, kind of our brake lights our yellow light you know caution increased risk environment and yet um, you know we're certainly I don't think at this point have a cause to go to level two um, from a volatility metric you see there's a number of warnings that come into play market and decline warning flash sharp increase warning flash we had the dick the daily squeeze on the VIX that's still present and at some point we would expect that that will break out 
we have uh, the distribution day increased on Friday. So uh, what has been a persistent high level continues and we are now at seven on the NASDAQ and six on the S&P. We have um, new highs, new lows also flashed a warning on Friday with 336 new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. We still have that crash warning that's been sitting out there on our in mini charts. And then finally, when you look at the intermarket risk aversion indicators, uh, all five of them are either right out signaling risk off or are crossing over to risk off. So um, we'll see if that actually follows through. But certainly, uh, this is not healthy um, bull market conditions when you have all five of your key intermarket risk aversion indicators, you know, signaling softness from our special opinions option income strategies you have to credit that the VIX is still inside the acceptable window I do have some option income strategies on but we are in a daily squeeze with the VIX and you know certainly you should consider reduced position size and account for the potential for increasing volatility cover call strategies uh, I tell you this um this approach has definitely saved me on a number of um, positions in recent weeks. Going with a pretty neutral posture and a pretty conservative distribution right now, two to one distribution between in the money and out of the money strikes. It's been very hard to get, even on the strongest of setups, significant follow through and, um, and having a conservative approach to this has paid off nicely during this current market condition put selling neutral so except acceptable for selling puts against the core portfolio baskets I did put on a number of positions on Friday taking advantage of that weakness and yet at the same time very very mindful of my position sizing and making sure that I was position sizing in um, an association with what I was willing to own in those stocks should we have a breakdown in the overall market which would clearly break down my market um, holdings there from a relative rotation graph notice just how weak these are you know we can sit here and we can look at the top of this um, chart and say XBI XSD ITB XRT you know the strongest of the strong but then when you actually look and see how they're rotating you know this is not exactly the symbol of strength and um, in fact it's pretty tough to pick out any of these sectors that you'd simply want to jump on and hold on for a bull ride uh, this is uh, looks to be uh, increasingly weak and um, uh, you know there is in relative terms you can be the strongest of the strong and still lose money because everything falls in value and that certainly is what can happen in bear markets from our point and figures um, we've had a number of uh, new changes that came into place this last week and notice the presence around the um, overseas markets EFA the developed and EEM the emerging markets ETFs both had new settings come into play on point and figure trends also high yield bonds went bullish across both the outlook and the pattern uh, so that was also a new change there sector market postures obviously Friday did a lot of damage and um, when you see you know very very little positive there and, and nothing that was you know bullish across all three time frames uh, energy perhaps is was the one that held up the best um, on Friday and we continue to watch for signs of bottoming but also be cognizant that any ride in, in the energy complex will be met with significant volatility given this current pattern sector market posture present change um, you see consumer staples that one has probably been one of the most consistent sectors in recent weeks and if you look across the time frames um, you can see how that bears out um, financials has also been relatively consistent this last month into the last quarter um, and consumer discretionary so those three sectors are probably holding up the best uh, in terms of um, you know short intermediate term uh, kind of time frames from an industry group standpoint retail back on top 
after hitting um, you know some speed bumps along the way here in recent days. Internet, healthcare, railroads, biotech in the top five um, are the sectors uh, from our shadow trader chart that um, have held up nicely of late or I should say better of late. So that should be enough for today. Greatly appreciate your reinvestment into us. Like us on YouTube and um, certainly also your comments back to us um, at our email support at falconglobaltraders.com and of course additional information is available on the website about all of our products. Disclaimers as usual. Hit the pause button if you need more time to review this. And we thank you each and every trading day from the Falcon Global Trading Community. We'll see you back here at the same place tomorrow.